Next, we look at examples of pre-sheaves on categories with two objects. In this case, each container will have two kinds of figures. The morphisms in the category will determine what kind of cohesion there is. The easiest example is when the category is discrete, meaning the only morphisms are identity morphisms. In this case, the category of pre-sheaves is equivalent to the category of the binary product of the category set. We can draw a container X as a partition box where there is no cohesivity involved. The second example is when there is one non-identity morphism between the two objects. In this case, the category of pre-sheaves is the category of bouquets. For example, if X is a container and alpha is an L figure, which we interpret as a loop or a pedal, then the morphism little l acts on it, producing the vertex A, from which this pedal emerges from. Here the coercivity is via a boundary association. However, you could also view this category as a set in time, where you have a before state and an after state. So for example, if A is an L figure, which we interpret as a vertex on the left, and little l acts on it, producing the V figure B. In fact, we see that X is precisely a set map. So the category of bouquets can also be viewed as the category of set maps. The third example is the category of graphs, which is the category of pre-sheaves on G, which has two objects and two morphisms between them. A container X then has arc figures and vertex figures, such that given an arc figure alpha, there is a source vertex A and a target vertex B associated to it. So here the cohesivity is by boundary. We could also try to visualize a container as a pair of set maps which share a common domain and a common codomain. If A is a category freely generated by two non-identity morphisms between the objects C and D, we can think of the category of pre-sheaves as alternating graphs where a container X has two kinds of vertices, C and D, and a sigma two process from a C figure A to a D figure B, and a sigma one process from a D figure B to a C figure A. Number five, we let RG be the following category, subject to the relations IS is equal to the identity on V, which is equal to IT, and SI is equal to sigma, and TI is equal to tau. This is the category of reflexive graphs. So for example, a container X is a graph with distinguished loops associated to each vertex. Then a vertex A is acted on by I to give an arc, beta, which is a distinguished loop. An arc alpha is given a source A and target B boundary, as in the case of graphs. There are also actions by sigma and tau, which act on an arc alpha giving a source distinguished loop beta and a target distinguished loop gamma. This category is useful if we want our graph morphisms to be allowed to map an arc to a vertex. Note that we can generalize graphs and reflexive graphs to n uniform hypergraphs, which take values in multisets. There is also a category of symmetric graphs not given above, which allows an involution action on arcs and is important because it can be used to model undirected graphs.